it's just it's just really about um stepping in where I can be can really kind of offer what I what my gifts are right now um so yeah that's the, that's where I'm at right now with it it's gonna change <laughs> but um we're gonna actually collectively play a little game later on called I Can Talk About. So I'm gonna end my little introduction with uh, an example of that. So when I think about how arts has changed myself or my community, um, I can talk about, um, can talk about really amazing teachers and really amazing community mentors also that that work for not a lot of money <laughs> it's just like i'm kind of thing <laughs> chris or Paolo? hello i'm uh chris st martin i'm a artist and educator from the chatham neighborhood which borders on roseland uh, let's see, I first learned uh, photography at the Park District near my home back in the 90s. And uh, since then, I've gone on to exhibit films and uh, festivals in places like Sweden and Finland uh, and Bali. Uh, I'll be creating a piece this summer at uh, Palmer Park in 2019 actually for me backtrack i had a residency at tule park where i uh, started to create an archive uh, about some of the former artists that were at that space uh, let's see here uh, doo -doo -doo. i recently showed at a gallery in detroit called norwest and had some pieces up through AMFM and Sierra McKissick at uh, the Silver Room the past couple of months. Um, pleased to be here. And um, let's see, I can talk about riding my bike in Roseland as a, as a teenager. Um, I'll go next. Um, it's very, Wonderful to share the space with Sojourner and Chris uh, and all the camp team. Um, my name is Paola Aguirre um, and my pronouns are she, her, a, uh, I am um, the founder of Borales Studio, um, an urban design and, and research practice um, uh, based in Chicago. And um, I've been really fortunate to work with the camp team uh, since last year, um, kind of thinking of you know, how do we how do we build tools? How do we think about resources for artists and creatives to connect with each other? And there are multiple ways, right? I'm I'm in the I'm also practicing urban planning. So my urban planning hat comes often into how do we how do we assemble information so we can find each other? Um, I've been spending the last four years um, working in Bronzeville uh, with communities. Uh, with uh, community organizations, with, with neighbors, um, trying to think of um, how do we repurpose in an inclusive way uh, our closed schools, um, working right out of um, Overton Elementary, a former Overton Elementary located on 49th and um, Indiana Avenue, um, creating, just basically making space to meet each other and think with each other and listen to each other and I think collectively, what what's the future of this community spaces? Um, so, in in terms of today's um, conversation, um, I can talk about um, I can talk about community care. We've been thinking um, very often lately about community care, solidarity, resiliency, and how the arts and creative practices can. Uh, intersect with those with those values and how, how we show with our um, how do we show in the spaces to support our community efforts um, that are rooted in this in this in this type of intention. Um, so yeah, so Jordan, back to you. Sweet. So um, we're gonna play 
a game and it's called I Can Talk About. And uh, we're gonna get, I'm gonna give you a little example. So what's gonna happen is um, everyone's gonna get into breakout rooms and we're gonna have a topic. So the topic is gonna be what, how has the arts, um, dance or theater or painting or uh, like even healing arts, whatever kind of you think of as arts been transformative for yourself or for your community? So how has the arts been transformative transformed you or your community, things like them. And we're gonna go back and forth and we're just gonna, so this is not, um, it's not actually each person taking a long time to talk about something. You're gonna just kind of make one short statement because we're gonna go around in a circle, um, just making um, one short statement about this topic. So um, if Chris, do you wanna give a little example with me? So. Sure. I can talk about, um, so first you're gonna introduce yourself. My name is Sojourner, she and they pronouns. And I can talk about um, going to the park district and learning how, oh my gosh, dancing to Jam Jackson in the summertime. Hi, I'm Chris, pronouns are he and him. I can talk about my mother not allowing me to go outside to play because guns were going off in Chatham. I can talk about um, taking learning how to to you work a loom at the Rogers Park 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 District. Even I can talk about taking my first photo class at Tule Park, and I was the only student in the class. I can talk about um, finding a little space in my room. Um, how art art has always been a meditation for me when I was like four years old. Yeah, I would get really quiet. That's one of them. I can talk about. My first job on the west side of Chicago uh, as a substitute photography teacher. Okay, cool. And so after 10 minutes of just going around doing I can talk about, so we're going to choose one topic that we um, collectively want to have a dialogue about. So you're going to kind of have to like pay attention to what people are saying, what interests you. Um, for instance, I might want to talk about um, you like classes at the park district like you were chris the only one in your photography class is what i'm remembering and i think i was the only one in my loom making class too so that might be an interesting interesting topic that the two of us can talk about like one-on-one -on -one <laughs> art classes in the park district <laughs> um so then we would spend the next 10 minutes talking about um having a dialogue about that okay Hello. Any questions? I think that sounds great. Uh, Latham, do you want to send us to rooms? So the rooms are going to be mostly five people, four people. So they're going to be small enough for you all to have um, multiple opportunities to go around in this virtual circle. So. Um, yeah, you don't need to choose any uh, like group leader, uh, just go around self facilitate, uh, we might pop into your rooms. Um, and um, yeah, just make sure you introduce yourselves and, and you know, um, get to know each other for a little bit. Yeah, and I'll send you a little um, time time uh, as well. So I'm going to switch um, from, you know, uh, the first part to the second part, um, where from where y'all are sharing what you can talk about to what you decide which you want to talk about collectively. I'll send you a little note uh, to let you know the time has changed. And then I'll give you uh, about a two minute warning when we're getting to the end of that group conversation. Cool, have fun. So yeah, it looks like 
Awesome. Um, let's have a little share out. Um, yeah, if folks can put in their topic. Um, actually, what I want to do is just, you know, if, if anything's resonating with you um, about your conversation, about your topic, um, you want to share. So, Journer, I think we're having a connection issue. Is anyone else having? Oh. Uh, yeah, it's hard here. Maybe everybody who's not speaking can uh, can mute themselves, and then whoever, and then just unmute yourselves just to speak. Um, so maybe it was just feedback. So, 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 Jenna, if you want to just repeat that. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. So we are we are having a few people in the chat put in their topic. So we can put our topics in the chat, and the the final topic that you decided to to kind of talk about for the last 10 minutes. And then if there's anything that's just super resonating with folks about what about your topic um, and you want to share out, um, let's let's just hear what what's what's lingering with you. And so you can just put yourself off mute and um, you could also just write in the chat too. Uh, but we'd love to just hear what's what's lingering with you from the conversations. Um. Maybe we could go in um, number of the groups. Who was group one? Was that us? That was us, yep. Okay. <laughs> to, to answer the question um, about why we believe the, the private sector should be involved in the arts, should care about the arts. No, I think it's just um, what did you all discuss? What was it? What was the topic or anything that kind of felt really um, pressing or salient in your conversation? We we talked about what we enjoy, like in the park, walking in the park, listening to the music. Um, looking at the trees, the healing part of them, the embracing part of them. Um, I experienced uh, on a windy, windy day that I thought it was gonna be a bad walk and cold, all of a sudden the wind stopped and then we found a tree and we, my friend and I, we looked up and it, I told her, look, and the, the, the tree looked like an umbrella, a lace umbrella and it was a very bright green color and it was very healing. So we stood for, there for a while and kind of did some quick meditation and healing. It was beautiful. The weather changed. Thank you. Um, anyone from room two? Angelique, Tareen, or Jackie? Um, our group talked about kind of the transformative like uh, effects of performance artwork and embodied practices. Uh, we talked also about our personal art practices and that showed me how personal art practices can also segue into careers in the arts um, sector and how thoughtful each person was in serving their community, but also making sure to like feed that creative part of themselves. Thank you, Taryn. Um, 
Anyone from group three? Kaiser to Jordan or Zach? Yeah, our group, um, uh, <laughs> maybe we got a little dark, but we got there. We went for a conversation of the corporate machine silencing the uh, artist's inner child over one's career, <laughs> um, among other things, uh, but, but about, um, uh, yeah, about trying to retain and, and nurture and feed that, um, that what makes us artists um, and surviving a career through it. Uh, I just wanna, I wanna kind of add to that and just say that um, I just remember the point when I was making work like multiple pieces of a year with multiple people and and I would just ask people to be in my piece and they would come and be in my piece and then I remember deciding you know that I was not going to make any more work unless I could pay people and so then that kind of shifted everything into you know the grant writing or grant writing and like what like trying to like kind of hustle for all of this like how do I do that <laughs> you know and um, and Zach, like Zach, was the one who mentioned the the sacrifice of the inner child, and I thought that was like, wow, that really explains that feeling of like all of a sudden there's there's not there's less of a I'm just gonna make work and it doesn't even matter, and now there's like this kind of heavy um, pressure and weight and questioning, you know, if, if what I'm making is valid or worthy. Um, yeah, and so I just wanted to share. Yeah, and I would just like to tag on that. Both, both of those were great synopsis of what we talked about. And for me, from my perspective, like, I just realized that there aren't enough opportunities for artists to just have conversations like this. like. I, I wouldn't have been able to talk with Kaiser or Sojourner in this like kind of vulnerable way without this medium. And um, I'm just leaving the, the conversation like, wow, I didn't expect that to happen or us to kind of feel connected in that way, um, especially people, cause I'm sort of maybe at a different point in my career um, than my, my room zoom roommates <laughs> um and yeah i just i'm like i want to have more of those conversations with people like i want more spaces like that in the art world so thank you for hearing my demands <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for sharing um that was great great sharing um can i invite someone from room four. That was my room, but I'm gonna stay quiet. I um, wanna hear from either Kristen or Derek. In our room, we talked about why the private sector should and does care about art making in Chicago. And we, spent time in talking about how often citizens of Chicago walk right past art because they define art perhaps in the context of its fine art as represented by the symphony or the museum and not recognizing that the corner garden or the community mural or the street festival or the trumpet player that they walk past <laughs> twice a day back and forth on State Street mm -hmm. um, is, is the art of the city and not recognizing how all of those contributions make it a vibrant city. And it's about uh, changing the perception of art and creativity and recognizing that particularly in the pandemic, this was my thought, um, how art saved so many people, not overlooking that the contributions that people were tuning into on Netflix, a lot of folks came out of Chicago that are either on Netflix, wrote for Netflix, or scoring for Netflix uh, shows, because that's what we do is we foster talent and a diversity of talent. 
and just getting folks to recognize that we are part of a, an ecosystem that is that has a national and international um, uh, playing field. And uh, people need to value all phases of it. So, Jenner, I was um, I shared your impression on me when we got into a conversation in another room about emergence, and that we're all in emergence. And this just really this this is the notion that we're constantly emerging, and um, that we have phases of emergence. And uh, tying it back to Chris's singular story of having picked up a camera for the first time at the park district, but that's where the story began for him. In, in this in this career in this life of art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, can we hear from room five, um, either Lauren, Louisa, Nikki or Stuart? I right, just um... Picking up on Kristen's point about emergence and sort of re-emergence and how um, I think as I typed in the, tried to type in the chat, the last conversation we had before the break room broke up, I thought was really interesting about all of the new experimental stuff that we've had to do and how you know, everybody says, and they're right, that the world's gonna be very different on the other side of this. We can't go back, to, we will never go back to, we can't go back to the way we were. And so I think it's been opened us up to some new ways to look at things and new ways to experiment with things and, and whatnot. And um, I'm, certainly art plays a real important role in, in helping people to think differently, which we're gonna need to do. And, and then my other, mothers might have other comments about our group, but that was, that's the thing that I was, that I took away from it. I really enjoyed something that, that actually Louisa said about the kind of secret and delight. Um, mm -hmm. We talked a lot mm -hmm. about um, about that, about how it's like you're in on a, on a secret with the artists, even though it's a collective, it might, might be a collective experience. Um, and, and, and then there was like some bonding in the group around how art connects you to people you care about, or even um, through the people you care about, their love for a specific thing might help you to explore something you wouldn't have explored um, on the other end of things. That's great. Um, anyone else from that group? Thank you everyone for sharing. Um, this is um, this was um, really exciting uh, for me to incorporate into this uh, conversation. Uh, uh, Sojourner was um, really generous and kind to bring this idea in, and I think we we're doing a good job. <laughs> so, um, but uh, it was it was also reflecting on this the title of this event uh, about creating with intention and how our role as artists oftentimes is could be could shift into instead of putting ourselves in the front of the conversation how do we um, decentralize or remove ourselves from the center of the conversation and create the space for others to have um, these dialogues and these discussions. Um, so with that in mind, um, I. Um, I would like to uh, invite Sojourner and Chris um, and to reflect with us a little bit on, 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 on their work and how you know, this community conversations, this methodology or this practice of the centering artists, um, how do they weave um, into their process and their work, um, bringing community together with intention? Um, should I go first? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, well, I think that, um, you know, even just starting out this event and creating this event in a way where we have community conversations and we hear from all of you all first informs and fuels even more the ways that I'm, I'm thinking about um, 
you know, all of it is immersion and all of it weaves into now, how, how am I going to take this conversation and weave it into, and I love, I love the, the things talked about of, of, I think that it is true that people walk by art and perceive art in a way that's separate from ourselves or don't really understand um, that it is that it is like the part of the of uh, the city culture that you know is the fun <laughs> you know and the life and the thriving and the like the cool things about being in Chicago you know like the music and um, the people and the dancing and the um, all of that so and. And so just from that perspective, I'm thinking about being in Douglas Park and being in Lawndale and what I'm, right now I'm literally just kind of listening and, and working to be there and not walk by the things that are there and you know, not walk by the murals and the people and the nature and the beautiful canopy trees that are, that are in the neighborhood and driving and giving it its culture and its, you know, and its life and its interconnectedness already. So I'm really like not trying, not really trying to create anything <laughs> so much um, as I'm just trying to show up and, and say like, what's already happening here and how can I magnify everything? Um, in the ways that I do with what I offer, you know? So, so far what that's looked like is, um, you know, it's funny cause I, I made a whole calendar, you know, planned everything out. And then like after one week of being engaged in community, I'm just like, okay, no, that's not, gonna, that's not happening <laughs> you know? because, you know, it's just like we have these deliverables and, and and these ideas of just like, okay, well, if the festival's happening, then we could perform on the festival. And then I met Jonathan Kelly and I'm like connecting with the pop-up museum and, you know, connecting with Miss Blanche and the African Heritage Garden and the, and the Stone Temple Church and like what they're doing. And I'm like, okay, no, I'm not performing at the festival, but like, you're telling me that your community could use a circle to connect because you know the living legends um jonathan kelly did a did a circle i did a project with the living legends of lawndale it was about like seven people did these interviews he's like well they don't actually really know each other so i was like okay well i can just do a circle and we can have a moment where people can tell stories to each other and, and get to know each other. So it's like, what's our, there's a project that's already been done and I'm, I can create a space where like people can just connect deeper, you know? Like I wanna, I wanna leave not having created something different that people like can walk by, you know, and, and forget or be like, I don't know what that person did over there, but like strengthen the, the things that are already going on. Like I would just wanna connect the hearts deeper. So um yeah and then and then um community engaged in my project kindred earth collaboration also looks like learning about nature and nature as a part of the community and nature is a main part of the community in a way that um the more we connect to nature and like the beautiful you know like tapestry canopies of the of the trees the more we're actually given proof and affirmation that we're supposed to thrive, we're supposed to, you know, be connected and be um, nourished and be resourced. So like one of the things that's coming up right now already is, you know, I, I downloaded a little um, app on my phone that was, that's just like a plant identifier. So I'm like walking down Lawndale, walking down Ogden, and so I identifying all these plants and it's like, okay, what is the earth saying? Well, the earth, you know, while they're not, you know, the soil is not, not, um, you wouldn't want to necessarily pick these herbs, but there's, you know, 
nettle growing there, there's chicory growing there, there's clove, um, there's mullein, like all of these herbs are medicinal, you know? And so like that is saying that the earth is giving you medicine and it's in the place where, you know, we through environment, uh, governmental agencies are very under-resourced. Um, but what is like, how is the earth resourcing that? So yeah, I think I'll stop there. I'm kind of weaving all of these things together, not quite sure how they're ultimately going to, to end up. Although, you know, it's just been very clear to me that like already, I feel like I can offer certain things to connect to connect hearts in a deeper way. Thanks, Adjourner. Um, so I, I like to hear from, similarly from Chris, um, you know, how does this type of approach show up in your work? Um, we have, you know, about, I also wanna open for, for some written questions that we can weave into the conversation. I put some questions together that we'd like to ask Chris and Sojourner, but feel free to add some, um, some of them in the chat and we can try to integrate them. Uh, we will have, we have about 20 minutes uh, in conversation with, with both of them. So um, yeah, Chris, what do you think? Well, um, I think that uh, in terms of working with community, I've got some weird audio going on right now, but I think it's just me. Um, working with community, it's all about going straight to the source. And uh, I love the word decentering, and I would like to uh, investigate that further um, about how to remove the artist's voice or the artist's perspective uh, from a, a participatory um, artwork. Um, so there's a lot of uh, education and research that goes into my practice and how I approach a uh, particular piece, uh, especially this one, because it's um, something that needs to be handled with a, a strong degree of care. And um, so to go in with uh, guns drawn and uh, assume that I'm gonna come out with a particular um, uh, outcome, uh, that needs to be kind of like thrown away and reevaluated. Uh, in order to to create something that's that's truly uh, communal and truly participatory, um, let's see here. Uh, a lot of my work, especially with uh, working with uh, Chatham and Rosalind, has to do with storytelling and oral history. Uh, I grew up listening to stories of how my grandparents uh, migrated to Chicago. And um, I uh, didn't get a chance to hear those stories um, from them, but I heard the uh, you know, stories from, from their children. My grandfather's uncle was alive at the time. So he was born in 1908. Uh, no, he was born in 1901. My grandfather was born in 1908. So the, the more, I mean, that's a lot for me to kind of start with right there. I was just like, okay, well, you came to Chicago, you had a, a house in, in Agile Gardens, you moved to the, the outer perimeter of Roseland. I mean, that, that kind of covers a lot of ground. Uh, you know, the further we go back, you know, we're, we're finding people in my, my family's history that are like in the Civil War. So, I mean, if I, I talk to people oftentimes about how I use myself as a, as a catalyst to talk about other people. But at the same time, uh, working in communities, you have the opportunity to go and collect stories. Uh, so with the camp project, I was able to record interviews with uh, individuals about their experiences in Roseland. And uh, going forward, uh, that is my greatest tool to be able to create something that is not only unique and specific, but talks directly 
about uh, community members' experiences is by recording their voices, recording their images, and working from there. So in this sense, the artist, in my mind, is a, is a tool and or a conduit in order to bring that together. Yeah, and I think what it's what I'm really enjoying of this conversation is, um, you know, your your different geographies in the city, right? Um, Lawndale, Roseland, how your your commitment to neighborhoods and and what's happening to them and connecting with um, with with people there. Um, it's it's very unique but similar at the same time so your your values that drive that work um the care and 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 that you put into your relationship building um, and cultivating um, those spaces um i would love you to share an example um that kind of answers or like addresses this question because i feel like also artists are 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 being um tasked with new things, uh, somehow they are becoming uh, very important actors in uh, community redevelopment and that what does that mean and how do we think about that? How do we reflect about that? So um, the question is what should artists uh, role be in community revitalization? And if you have, you know, an experience or an anecdote that, um, expresses or 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 just shares a little bit in, in in which ways have you presented yourself with those with that kind of response in your own ways so Jordan, can we can we start with you sure i'm, I'm also open to like other people here in this space who have like thoughts and ideas about what that means um, and experiences, goals in community re revitalization. Um, well, you know, I, uh, community revitalization, I think that, I, I think about my vision my vision for how I just want to live in community and be an existing community. And um, I think it was something that was in some cultures and traditions and, you know, just like really lives very naturally and authentically. Like music is playing all of the time, stories are being told all of the time, people are showing up and making food for each other all the time. You know, like we're, you know, whoever's doing the weaving and the painting and, you know, it's a, it's a community event. People do it together as a part of the way that we exist, you know. Um, and so when I'm co going into these spaces, I'm I'm just imagining of of like creating circles where people can sit and tell stories and resolve conflict and um, you know sit around a fire and weave or <laughs> um, take walks and you know not say anything to each other but just be with each other and um, know each other in a way that's like a very deep way. I think that um, like the art of connecting, the art of um, really learning each other. I think I realized in the past few years that like I don't really know a lot of people, <laughs> you know, like I, I collaborate all the time. I make projects all the time. I'm always producing something with people. And I love when I find someone artistically that I get on with so well that the art just is made so beautifully, but like, I, I don't know, you know, that their cousin just passed away two day, two weeks ago. Like they wouldn't share that with me necessarily, or they would, but it would be around in the context of like, um, I'm letting you know where I am as we go into this rehearsal, you know? So it's like, or even questions that I'm, things about my mother, things about, it's like, I really, I, I want to know people 
I want to really know people and I want people to really know who I am and to know that 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 the people around me have capacity for as who I everything that I am and so like part of my art is part of the purpose of using art is to connect you know it's the art of connecting so um like sit to sit down and and teach a youth how to facilitate a circle or you know to you know the skill sharing the skill sharing is a part is only one layer of like how do we completely become human with each other um, so i don't know if that answers the question but I, I think it does, you know, this, this, this role of creating space, making space for others to connect. Um, I mean, you can, it's, it's, you can learn how to do it, but it takes, it takes a lot of practice to write how to, how to, how to create that. Um, and I think that's a very important role. Um, in, in, you know, in a lot of communities, we are, we're just used to have top down, just, you know, instructions and what to do and like, we all kind of navigate in that and when we're brought to a space uh where we are feeling equal and heard and listen and you know just care for it it's it's a different kind of experience so i i would like to hear from chris chris what do you think see here i was uh, jotting down some notes while sojourner was talking um and um you know she mentioned how Art is like a, a connecting tool, you know, that literally brings people together. Um, I have been thinking about um, how we associate or how we perceive art in various communities. Uh, I grew up in a neighborhood where there was no public art. And uh, oftentimes I, I wrestle with that idea and um, I understand why I was drawn to uh, to Pilsen when I became you know, legal and able to to leave home. It's just like, well, I want to I want to live there because it's very colorful. And I remember thinking, wow, uh, I didn't know that this was this was possible. Uh, so I guess I, I lived in a community that was uh, kind of rigid in its way of of thinking uh, up until uh, a certain point and. Um, I would uh, travel back and think about uh, the need for murals to to exist uh, past 55th Street, uh, which it definitely happens nowadays. I mean, uh, I remember going and uh, during the protests last year and uh, filming some people putting together a mural on 79th Street and just uh, just being in awe of that and very, very appreciative. Um, so there is this uh, this cohesion and um, to some degree artists are the the marketers of uh, of a community uh, they're the people who are putting up the the banners if you will you know this the community's marketing department uh, so you know whether that be graffiti or whether that be a mural uh, these are giant indicators for what goes on in a particular place. It shows you what uh, a community's values are, and you understand where the the definition is. And even with um, you know, not to not to scare my suburban uh, folks, uh, uh, with with gang insignias, uh, you you start to understand well what call them organizations, what organization operates within this particular boundary, or there are, you know, lines of demarcation. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all very uh, territorial. Uh, so, you know, a, a particular group will tell, you know, an individual way, well, I need you to mark so that people know not to, to cross this particular line, especially, you know, speaking of lines, you know, living in a very uh, segregated city, city like Chicago, you are kind of prone to understand that there are tons of, of boundaries. So what do artists do to show and to illuminate that marketing 
uh, about their particular community. You need to know what, what areas to cross, where that, um, where that system ends and where a new jurisdiction begins. And a lot of times I see that with, um, with train lines and with uh, railroad crossings. So viaducts are oftentimes those spaces where one neighborhood ends and another begins. You know, Chicago being on that massive grid system, once you pass a, a viaduct, nine times out of 10, you're in a different neighborhood. Um, so those viaducts are oftentimes those same places where we see murals. Um, so, you know, a lot of work needs to be done continuously. Uh, it has been done to show the, um, and to alter the perception of what uh, art created by young people is or what art, uh, what public art means. You know, there are a lot of people who just don't understand the symbols. And you know, if you ask somebody from a particular generation, they say, oh, well, you know, that's all gang stuff. You know, like, no, 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 no. Look a little bit deeper, you know, learn the symbols. Uh, the symbols are tools of communication. So once again, the artist is a, is a communicator. That's a really interesting point. Like how do we, how do artists and their work can help to expand, sorry, expand the mindsets of like what, what is understood as as art, right? Like we're talking about making space for others. That's a form of art. We're talking about, um, Chris, you're, you're talking about like seeing value and things that, um, seeing a different value or interpreting differently um, pieces of art or art making that has very, very strong connotations or has had very strong connotations for the longest time. Um, and how do we, you know, reclaim that language, reclaim that space? Um, I want to open it to folks for questions. I also want to acknowledge uh, Marta's um, sharing in the chat. Uh, Marta, if you want to come on mic to share that, um, but also I want to encourage other other questions um, um, from other folks. We have about um, seven minutes left with uh, with this group, so yeah. I wanted to agree with, um, I, didn't, I didn't comb my hair today properly to meet you all. So I don't know how, I, I didn't want to scare you, but anyway, what I want to say is that <clears throat> Kristen Larson said, you know, we have to change the perspective because the art is everywhere, you know, just looking at nature, looking at people. Uh, Yes, art is everywhere, so we have to just learn to appreciate it. I was taught by a musician in Mexico to always honor a musician that's out in the street. And in Mexico and everywhere, there's always playing. So I make it a habit. If I go down the, down the subway and I see somebody playing, I always rush, I don't rush, but I walk there to make sure that I give money. That's the statement that I'm making, that the saying, I appreciate what you're doing greatly. And usually when someone does that, then in, if somebody noticed, then somebody else will come. So I always, that's my way of, of saying, change the perception of where it's art and begin to appreciate it. I liked also that I mentioned that um, uh, some artists, graphic artists, and my, my son who had some poet, uh, poem about Pilsen, 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 um, they would, when, when this all thing was happening, Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, there was a conflict between the communities and they, these artists set out to sp stand in unity with what was happening, the division that exists in our city. And sometimes they would be posting and they would get caught and they would say, take that down, take that down. And then they sit there and they stand there and talk to the people to try to educate them. And other times um, you see it more, or you see in that it's being preserved. So it's a way of like marketing your community. It's a way of uh, being communicators and, li and, and linking. And I'm gonna agree with this, with SAC, that artists need more opportunities, more opportunities. We know fantastic and wonderful people and that need to be connected 
I have a yoga breathing instructor that she's amazing. She's been doing yoga since she was five years old. She can teach it in three languages and possibly more. And you know, she's not connected. And I gave her the camp link, I told her. So she's gotta be pushed over because art heals. And I'll, I'll be quiet, please, thank you. Um, I just wanted to, um, you know, just continue on, but thinking about the um, transformative, we're, I, I think we're in the business of, of transforming, um, not just things, but everyone and anything that we come in contact with. Um, I, um, um, but I also have, uh, a, a question on that. Um, I've, I'm at, at West Pullman Park and our park is, is interesting um, in that we're surrounded um, by um, homes and people. Um, but um, the, the people who come to the park, who use the park, um, are are not from the community that we're in. Um, so um, we, we're, you know, we we want what we want to to do is, um, or what we're trying to do is invite the community in um, to to see what what they can experience in their own neighborhood and you know that to show them that there's this resource here that um, you can make um, make it be whatever it is that you need it to be. Thank you so much, Eric, for sharing. Uh, Turin, did you have your hand, your virtual hand up? You wanna go? Yeah, actually to kind of continue what Derek just brought up. I really appreciated, first of all, um, both of the artists explaining their works and how they were thinking through their process. I noticed that both, both of y'all create context rather than content. You create a space for people, histories, stories to be told in. And my question that I had um, as an artist myself, is how both of you kept your communities centered in both of your artworks. What I'm really connecting to is what um, was said about art is the community marketing department. And so my question extends also to who are, who are you marketing this community to? Is it to investors? Is it to the community themselves? Um, I was just really curious about who you are centering, how you do it, and also who your audience is as well. Uh, thank you so much for that question and that reflection. Uh, can I have either Sojourner or Chris um, reflect on that? And um, I think that might be our last comment before passing it back to Jackie. Any final like reflections? That was great, Taryn, thank you. Um, I think that uh, it really depends on who you market to. Well, you know, there's, a, there's this idea about representation. Uh, it's like the root of representing. It's, it's to, to take what is present and to Kind of multiply it to reproduce it again so so to represent it um and that's a, a concept that i'm always like following uh from the theorist uh stuart hall uh who was a cultural theorist in england uh made some pretty amazing connections between england and uh, the caribbean um but to speak to that directly uh, I'm a product of the hip hop generation, and I come out of, uh, of being around the periphery of graffiti culture. And usually, the the symbols and the you 
know, writing and demarcations were typically um, indicators to other people who are familiar with those symbols. So let's take Pilsen, for example. Are the murals in Pilsen uh, representations uh, for other people to look at a marvel at? Or is it for the community to look at and to marvel at and enjoy? It's kind of like a, a double-sided coin, I think, that it's, it's for everyone to, to look at and, and to appreciate. But those who know the symbols, those who know what they're looking at, they feel represented or represented when they see those symbols. Jenna, are you good? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that was beautiful. Um, I think I would just um, to answer that myself. Um, yeah, I mean, marketing is, is always such a, an interesting thing when it's like, I'm also connected to the park district and all of the organizations <laughs> attached. So like anything that I might do is also marketed out um, so it's interesting because there's there, because of that, there's always going to be people coming in to the community to like, see what is happening, what the artist is doing in the community, um, which is a tricky place to be. Um, but I think for right now, what it feels like is, you know, I'm working to connect with the organizations that are already in the, in the community and they have their own, you know, email lists and they have their own groups of people. And um, those are the folks that I'm looking to, to uplift and, and to, to magnify and uh, to listen to. And that hope of, hopefully they would feel um, nourished enough to invite other people from, from the community. Um, thank you both. I, I really appreciate sharing the space with all of you. Um, and um, I'm gonna pass it back to Jackie to close us. Hey everybody, my name is Jackie Cajero and along with Latham, I'm a cultural liaison with the Chicago Park District. So I've been working on this uh, cultural asset mapping project uh, for the past year or so. And so I wanted to say thank you so much, uh, Chris, Sojourner and Paola. And to all of you, maybe we could just give them a moment, just have some snaps, you know, Woo! <laughs> thank you so much for, sharing your thoughts and your practice. And thank you to all of you who came today for such a rich um, conversation. Um, as we wrap up tonight's program, I'm dropping two links in the chat. The first one is for the Cultural Asset Mapping Projects Hub. And here you can um, add a story about an experience, uh, arts and culture experience in the Chicago neighborhood that was meaningful to you. Or if you're an artist or cultural worker, you can share your practice um, or you can do both. For the second uh, link is for our profile on Instagram. Uh, if you want to follow us and tag us, um, you can share stories, share your story, um, tag us, or if you have events going on, if you're an artist, any opportunities, calls for artists, Java openings, um, send them our way and we will um, redistribute them. Um, and so feel free to open the links now so you don't lose them. And with that, I'll look forward to hopefully seeing you all next month. We have another conversation planned on July 12th um, about mapping for systemic and social change. So with that, thank you all so much again for being here and hope you all have a, a great night. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> That's all. We're just, I think we're, does anybody want to do a little, we're just waiting for everybody to leave so our team can do a little debrief or a little talk back. So thank you all so much for coming. It was an amazing sharing space with you today.
maybe we'll just stop recording now. <laughs>